Yes. Um, okay. Um, hello everyone. My name is Xue Hong Chen and I come from National Taiwan University. And my advisor is Dr. Yan Fu Gu. Yeah. And today's my topic is identifying and localizing the disease parts of lead by on tomato leaves using deep convolutional neural network. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. And in a research at 2006, the plant pathogens cause up to 16% estimate potential yield loss globally. And the lead fly is a severe disease to tomato and cause an annual loss of 6.7 to 15 billion USD, US dollar. And after a, a plant infected by the lead fly, and the leaf will appear a lesions and maybe it will infect the fruit of tomato and in this case the tomato cannot be sold or be eaten so uh, uh, it is very uh, uh, bad thing for the farmer if, because if they will lose the money so to reduce the loss, loss I, we need to uh, find uh, when the field is infected by the labor as soon as possible so conventionally, the uh, identification of lead by rely on the farmers or the uh, disease experts next the eye observation. But there are some problem of manual identifying. Uh, first, it's time consuming and inconvenience. Maybe sometime for a human error, it will be inaccurate. So we want to develop an identification system. It must be the non-destructive convenience and high accuracy. So um, there are three stages for us to build this identification system. The first stage, uh, we want to identify and localize the disease spot on, of labelite on tomato. And the stage two, we want to identify and classify different disease of tomato. And the last stage, we hope we can transfer to the um, mobile disease the device, devices. And in this research and presentation, we will focus on the stage one, identify and localize the disease spot on tomato. So here's my objectives. Uh, first, I want to acquire image of tomato leaves uh, infected with lead blight and healthy tomato leaves. And second, I want to ident identify tomato plants infected with lead blight using the deep learning method. And the Finally, I want to localize the lesions of lead blight on tomato leaves. So it, I think it will look like this. I got the images and I put this image to a CM model and I hope it will tell me what this image is and where is the lesion. So let's start with the image acquired. And thank you to Taiwan Agricultural yeah. Research Institute for collecting and providing the image. And the image was acquired using a digital camera, and there are two types of different camera we use. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, so this six pic image is the uh, image in my database. And as you can see, uh, each image has a complex background, and also it has a different illumination illumination conditions. So maybe it will be a challenge for the traditional image process to find out which one is the uh, leaf infected by lead fly and which one is the healthy uh, leaves. And actually, uh, this, this two, three, uh, this three images is a lead fly image, and this three is a healthy image. And you can see this relation in the images. And in my data set, I have about 1,000 images for each class and I split, split it to the training data set and test data set and with the ratio 4 to 1 <coughs> and before we use this image to do the training we need to do some pre-processing and first we have a original image and its size is 1280 by 1920 RGB image then we will do the crop and resize to uh, 448 by 448 RGB image. And last, we will do the normalize to, <coughs> to the image. And finally, we can 
uh, fed this imagery to the model and start the training. So let's talk about the model. And uh, here I have two different models can choose in my research. And the, the first one is the factor RCN. It is a supervised learning. Uh, and another one is the NTS NET. It's a self-supervised learning. So what can the factor RCN do? Uh, first, in the training stage, we will have uh, images. And we give the factor RCN the uh, class and the power annotation information in the train to the factor RCN in training stage. Then after the training, uh, in the prediction stage, the factor RCN will tell us what it is and where it is relations. And what can the NTSNet do? Um, we, we can only provide the class of the images in the <coughs> training stage. And the NTSNet, after the well training, it can, in a prediction stage, it can tell us what it is and the various relations. So in here, I, in my research, I, I use the NTSNet because I want to reduce the labor of the image labeling. And so I, need, I, I want to reduce some time. So let's talk about what is NTSNet. And let's start with how the NTSNet doing prediction. First, we have an input image, and we will put it into the feature extractor to extract the feature. And then we put this feature to the navigator network. And in the navigator network, it will use this feature map to find out which region is the remote, uh, important important region in the original input image, and we will crop these regions. And then this crop region will fit into the feature extractor again, and to output the feature vectors. And finally, we will use these all feature vectors to put it into the scrutinized network. And in scrutinized network, it will use this feature vector to do the prediction. So, and then let's talk about the teacher network. And as you can see, the network is a network only operating in training stage. And based on this feature vector, the teacher network will output a teacher signal, teaching signal to the navigator network to help us to improve the navigator network. And let's look more detail about the relationship between the navigator and the teacher network. So here's the more detail in a uh, flow chart. And first, uh, the navigator network will get a feature map. And here is the feature map, a uh, four by four feature map. And uh, the informatic score is mean the value of each grid on the feature maps. And here, we believe that the higher value of grid co correspond to the more important region in the original image. So we want to find out the grid with the highest value. So here we will find these three grid as our highest uh, value grid. So the informatics score one, two, three will look like this. And then we will use this information to crop the regions and then put into the feature extractor to output the feature vectors. And then the teacher will based on this feature vector to do a classification and output the probability of the class. And we call the probability the confidence score, CS. So, so when a feature vector with a higher confidence score, it means this vector provides the more uh, use, useful uh, feature to the teacher network and help the network to uh, find to, to do the classification. So, uh, we will use these two IS123 and 6123 to, do, uh, to help us to improve the navigator network, use this, use multi-rating pairwise ranking laws. So, when the IS123 and the CS123 in the same order, it means when the navigator finds the uh, most informative regions, and it will lead to the most confidence scores vector. And it also means the navigator is finding the right regions in my, in my, in my input images. 
So when the order of these two, uh, the order of these two thing is the same, and the loss will decrease. But if not, the loss will increase. So by doing so, we can uh, make sure our navigation network find the right uh, regions in our original images. So that's uh, how the whole NDS net looks like this. Okay, and then let's talk about our training detail. And I use the two GPU device and uh, just look at it. And uh, let's talk about result. This is the of the disease plant ident identification. And I reach the 99.76% average accuracy of this model. And you can see only 0 0.42 uh, uh, healthy uh, leaf image were misclassification to the lead blind images. And, oh, here is the method top three. Let's uh, talk about what is method top three. Because in the prediction stage, we can choose uh, how many feature vectors we want to use in the prediction stage. So if the method top one is mean, we only use this red, red uh, feature vector to do the prediction. And if the, the uh, method top three is mean, we use this all feature vector to do the prediction. Okay, and next we talk about the result of the lesion localization. And you can see uh, in the top one method, I uh, achieve the best precision of 50% and the best, best recall is the 59.3% when I will use the top three methods. And these three pictures is the, uh, it's all the bound, prediction bounding bars that create, uh, generated by NTSNet. And you can see it is focused on some relations. Okay, this is my conclusion. And this study identified lead fly in fact tomato plants and to localize the relations of lead fly on tomato leaves using NTSNet. And the model achieved a mean accuracy of 99.76% in disease and healthy plant identification. And the model achieved a precision of 15% in relation localization. And here's my acknowledgement. And thanks for listening. Question for Xue Hong. Yeah, thank you. Hey, nice presentation. Thank you. Oh, um, how many, how many uh, images you used for testing, uh, for developing your accuracy? The mean accuracy is at 99%. Meaning? Oh. How many number of samples, how many images, or how many samples we used? For to te test this yeah. result? Uh, here I have a chart. Wait a second. I think it's here. This is the you mean this data set? Yeah, yeah, I okay. use uh, about uh, in ton, uh, two hundred uh, about two hundred okay. and uh, about about four two hundred okay. image to do the test. Okay. Question. Question for Shikong. Okay. So any question? <laughs> Next question for the tomato lay fly lesion. I got a question. You got a question. So in that so in that presentation, you said you are doing crop and size 448 by 448, right? Yeah. So is there any reason for that size? Or I'm wondering... You, need, uh, you mean if the lesion must in the less square images, mm -hmm. the lesions? Uh, yeah, so I have... Uh, I, I will make sure that... Uh, because when, when we uh, take a picture, mm -hmm. we will uh, make sure that the lesion and the leaf must in the center of the image. So when we do the resize and crop, I, uh, each image have, uh, if the class is a light light, and each image at least have one lesion in the images. Uh, is that answer your question? Yeah, and one more thing is you said the background is complicated, right? Yeah. So did you do segmentation, something like that? 
segmentation. Only the leaf from the background, or you are just putting whole images? Oh yeah, I just putting a whole image to original the whole images. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're training and yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, I just do the normalize for for reduce the calculating of the GPU. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Question? Okay, so I have one question. <laughs> <laughs> That's my responsibility to have some questions. Really? <laughs> yeah. So for the NPS day, it looks like you can save some time for annotation. Yeah. But once you have more than one type of lesion, then how can you modify that to identify maybe more than two? Uh huh. Uh, I think because in, in, uh, from uh, because in this stage we only have two types and it's an easy easy type it, it's a healthy one and a lepra one so it's very easy for a model to spray it out but in the future we will in maybe stage two or stage three we will um, uh, we will put more different disease of tomato into our model and at that time I cannot sh I, I I don't sure uh, I cannot sure that uh, the model will work, but uh, but maybe it will work. So maybe at that time we will um, still to uh, if it work, we will still use NTSNet. But if not, maybe we can use other method, maybe Fetorosian or other different method. Yeah, is this is my opinion. <laughs> it's good. Always trying. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.